here I am today, standing again in the beauty of the Oxfordshire countryside, and reflecting on a concern uh, and an opportunity. I've said numerous times, uh, it goes without saying actually, these are very weird and strange times in which we're living. Uh, I want to talk today about relationships. If you read Genesis chapter 2, the early part of the Bible, you'll see the story of creation and the creation of human life. Uh, Adam arrives on the scene, God having made the world. Uh, and then in Genesis 2.18 and the little section that follows, um, God says this, it's not good for man to be alone. Now, this is really in the context of a relationship with Eve and the underlying position about marriage as an institution in the context of uh, societal life. It's not good for man to be alone. But actually, more broadly than simply the specific relationship of marriage, uh, it's not good for man to be alone. God designed us for relationship, uh, not for isolation, uh, which is why many of us are finding this such an unusual and indeed very difficult time. Relationships matter and we want to encourage them to flourish. So we have a concern that relationships may not flourish as well in the future and it's an opportunity for Christians to be part of that relationship building. This is what I mean. Once lockdown is eased even more around the world, people are still going to be afraid and they're going to be afraid of other people. How near can they get to them? Two metres, one metre, who knows? Are other people the source of disease and illness? Should I be afraid of other people and stay away from them continually in order to stay safe? Institutions are going to increasingly want to, quote, protect their staff. And so they're going to use coronavirus as a kind of cover for reducing the number of customer facing individuals and retreat behind a kind of wall of the internet or automation, that's already happening in large ways. Get used to the idea that after Corona, you're gonna spend far more time on the phone hearing that very irritating message which says, your call is important to us, but we're experiencing high vol uh, call volumes. Um, get used to the fact that more and more things are going to be shoved into an automated setting and away from people to people contact. Because people to people contact is expensive for firms, but of course, particularly for older people, for whom the internet's still a bit of a mystery, they need that human contact. They want, when they're discussing a holiday or an insurance policy or a banking issue, to talk to a real person. It gives a certain security and, and so on. Uh, one recent major survey of 45 nations around the world found that post-corona, 50% are going to invest far more heavily in automation, partly as cost reduction, uh, and increases in efficiency, of course. But the danger is always uh, that people will be marginalised and things will be elevated. The danger will be that consultations with your doctor will more and more be on the phone. Of course, this may be more efficient, but the human doctor-patient relationship can be seriously compromised if we're not careful. And so the worry post-corona is that relationships in all sorts of settings will be things of fear. So we look forward to meeting other people in a restaurant, well we used to, now we'll think, I hope the table's a long way from them because I don't want to be near anybody I'm not living with or I don't know. Uh, and that fear will become pervasive, it will be very hard to overcome that fear for so many people. Humans who once were a source of friendship and company might now be viewed as the enemy. There, I'm staying right away from them in case I catch something. So somehow Christians have got to turn that on its head and to begin to re-embrace relationships, to encourage people to make friendships post-corona, to continue to check on the neighbour you've been checking on, to continue to look after the people around you, not to stop doing that as this Thing recedes from being the massive problem it's obviously been in so many of our countries. It's not good for us to be alone. It creates all sorts of human problems. So Church of Jesus, arise in the future. Look beyond the walls of the building, which hopefully you'll be occupying again 
in various ways. Look beyond it to the society and community beyond it to build relationships, to promote everywhere you can, in shops and restaurants, in sports centres, in places where people will gather. Promote an absence of fear and a connectivity. Because if we don't, our society will be deeply damaged long term by an absence of warm and open and loving relationships. God knew it wasn't a good thing for us to be isolated and alone. So let's play our role in the future in opening up society and creating good, healthy, positive relationships which will bring people joy. So today, think about how as the future unfolds, you can be a joy giver, a relationship builder, a community developer, society enhancer, as you go out of your way to be the friend people need in a warm relationship which God intended for the human race and you're part of making it happen.